What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to disprove the flat earth theory because it's fun too. Um, so there is a um, report, an article thing that I'm going to link down below um, that uh, helps um, do this simply using weather. Um, so strap yourselves in, it's going to be fun. Um, it is the Washington Post and the uh, headline is the weather helps disprove the flat, the flat earth hypothesis. If the earth were flat, the weather would be nothing like it actually is today. Okay, so it starts off with a very obvious statement. The earth is round. Um, it then continues with, it may seem like an obvious fact that we've understood since primary school, but for a body of flat earthers, uh, the concept of a globe-shaped Earth is paramount to what they claim is the biggest conspiracy theory ever to exist. Their existence is the conspiracy. Um, their science is laughable, correct. Um, their evidence baseless, also correct. And their claims prone to falling flat, pun completely intended. Um, but that hasn't stopped flat earthers from devoting a lot of effort to a cause that uh, lacks dimension. Uh, another good pun. Um, so, if the flat earth hypothesis, hypothesis were true, well, we're really stumbling on that word tonight, aren't we? Um, first of all, you'd be crushed to death. Just, just straight out the gate you would be crushed to death. Because of the way gravity works, um, which we all encounter in our daily lives, um, every molecule of air would be drawn to the Earth, uh, to the Earth's center of mass. Because the Earth is a globe, this means the atmosphere cells around the Earth pulled towards the Earth's center, its core. Um, but air is stopped by the Earth's surface. Uh, the air pressure depends on height through a relationship known as hydrostatic balance. You can get very sciencey if you want to go and look that up yourself. Um, but in most places where we live, the air pressure is within tolerable limits and we're able to uh, survive it quite well. However, if the Earth were flat, um, disproportionately large chunk of air would be drawn towards the center of the disk that flat Earth is believe in, which means that there's more air at the North Pole, according to Flat Earthers, and none in Antarctica, um, sending thoughts to our Antarctic researchers uh, stationed around that particular continent. Um, air pressure would range from near zero or no atmosphere at the edge of the disk to massive values towards the middle. So if you, if you lived in, say, Australia, um, and this is actually part of what they've got written, um, you'd probably suffocate from a deficit of oxygen. So all of my big sighs of exasperation at the idiocy of this theory um, proves otherwise. Um, if you lived too close to the North Pole, you'd end up being crushed by the weight of the atmosphere. Um, the amount of air pressure would simply just crush you. Um, so that means that people living in the northern ends of uh, Canada, Scandinavia and Russia apparently would just be, and polar bears as well, uh, would, would, not, would not exist up there. Um, rain and hail would fall sideways, and you may also drown. This is our second point. On a flat Earth, the pull of gravity uh, would be directed towards the planet's center, as we just established. Um, flat Earths contend that that's the North Pole. So rain, hail, and every other form of precipitation would fall 
north. Um, it would fall out of the clouds and pr immediately proceed to head directly towards the North Pole. Um, at the pole and close to it, all that precipitation uh, in the air would converge and eventually pile up. Above and near the pole, the moisture would pile up high into the sky. The oceans would bulge up too. With the temperatures that exist at the North Pole, it might freeze, leaving giant ice pylons towering high into the sky. Some of it could be liquid, so there could be a column of water suspended in midair. Um, through that same process, a rocket launched into the air would eventually find itself returning towards the North Pole rather than the Earth's surface. Um, so, the fact that rain doesn't fall this way uh, also proves that the Earth is spherical. Um, however, seeing as if that were the case, the center of the planet would also have floating columns of water. Seems like a pretty good place to set a high fantasy series. Um, the, uh, the sun would never set. Um, if you've ever experienced nighttime, <laughs> uh, then you've witnessed proof that the Earth is not, in fact, flat. Uh, the flat Earthers say the Sun is... So stupid. 32 miles wide, or about the diameter of the city of Houston. Now, the uh, fact that we've used miles in an American city should let you know where a majority of flat Earthers are from. They argue also that the sun rides around in circles about 3,000 miles above the Earth. Um, so it's only, you know, instead of being like this big, it's only like this big. Uh, and instead of being so far away from our planet, um, that our quite small moon in comparison to how big the sun is, appears to be about the same size from our perspective. Um, yeah, it's it's not 3,000 miles above us. Um, if that were the case, however, the sun would never set because if the Earth is supposedly flat, um, there would nothing, f there would be nothing for the sun to set below if it were to travel along such an arc. You'd simply just see it doing circles. They'd potentially, potentially, be times where it's less light, um, when it's like floating over the other side of, you know, like directly above the other, other side of the disc, um, but yeah, it, it's not, so it doesn't. Um, the person that wrote this crunched the numbers based on what the Flat Earth proponents say. Even in the dead of winter, the sun would never drop below 14.7 degrees altitude in Washington, D.C., which is about the same height the sun appears in that same city, in, in Washington, D.C., around 7 p.m. on July evenings. 7 p.m. in July. That's when it gets to there. That's the lowest the sun would set. Um, they've got an image here of the sun rising behind buildings of banking district in Frankfurt, Germany. Um, I believe that that could also potentially be about the same amount of um, degree um, of elevation. Which, yeah. Ridiculous. Um, so we would either all freeze or we would all burn. Um, flat Earth, so they, as I said, they 
say this the the sunny is 32 mile wide um, again this person crunched the numbers and did the math and they found an error if the sun really were only 3,000 miles above us as flat as this claim it would have to be 27.9 miles wide not 32 um, and even then that's ignoring other problematic issues um, but for the sake of argument let's believe them uh, and let's say it is 32 miles wide and it is parked 3,000 miles above the Earth's surface if we keep their tiny Sun at the same temperature of the actual Sun which is by comparison to their 32 miles is 865,000 miles in diameter quite a bit bigger um, then we can do the math to figure out how much solar radiation we would get so we're looking here at the UV light now um, so it may surprise you to learn that the flat earth disk has nearly two and a half times the surface area as the actual curved version of the earth uh, if we assume that the flat Earth's, Earth's tiny sun is heating it all, then we'd freeze, missing out on more than a third of the solar radiation we actually get from the sun, which means that human life wouldn't exist. Um, so if you've ever seen a, a human before, that's proof that the Earth isn't flat. Um, but let's say we keep the surface area the same as our planet. We distributed the same in, um, the same amount of uh, solar energy over that, then it would be way too hot. Most, if not all, locations on Earth would be uninhabitable, and again, human life would not be able to exist. So, if you again have seen humans before, proof that the Earth is spherical. Um, lunar eclipses apparently wouldn't happen. Um, so you may have seen the moon plunged into blood red hue during the total lunar eclipse with dim sunlight passing around the, through the atmosphere bathing the moon in that eerie glow. Uh, lunar eclipses are much more readily visible than solar eclipses, um, but flat earthers have an alternate explanation for what makes a lunar eclipse. What it actually is, um, is an alignment in which the Earth intercedes between the Sun and the Moon. Um, therefore, eclipsing any sunlight heading towards the Moon. Um, but such a lineup wouldn't be possible according to Flat Earthers who say the Sun and Moon are constantly drifting in circles above the Flat Earth's surface. So, the, it's the disk, and then up in the sky we've got the sun and the moon and they just do little circles around each other um, always at opposite ends of the disc and just sort of spinning around obviously in the one direction um, but just just spinning around opposite each other um, so instead their hypothesis is that a shadow object orbits the sun um, and enters the lineup between the sun and the moon. This shadow object, which is also dubbed the anti-moon, apparently is translucent. That they say filters out some, but not all, of the light, and therefore casts a red, a red light, on, a, a, a red, a red glow onto the moon, which you know makes a whole heap of sense. Um. But if we ignore for a moment the fact that the sun would never set on a flat earth, it's still impossible. When we see the partial phases of a lunar eclipse, we're witnessing the moon disappearing behind the round edge of the earth's shadow, not a flat shadow. Um, however, if the flat earth theory were true, millions of people perpendicular to the sun-moon lineup would see a fully eclipsed first or last quarter moon and that doesn't happen um i mean first and last quarter moons as well like 
we would never we would never get new moons if the sun's always shining on one particular side it doesn't matter if the earth if, if the moon turns it's still going to be that same half all the time so you're always gonna if, it, if the moon's always directly above you you're gonna look up and you'll just see a half moon constantly um it's not until it would be opposite you that you'd be able to see some sort of a you'd never get a new moon unless you lived all the way out in Antarctica um which um philosophers struggle to explain moon phases is literally the next sentence um if their theory were correct everyone on earth would see a different moon phase at the same time depending on which side of the supposedly 32 mile wide moon they were on and that just doesn't happen um like I said, you can't be at one end of the planet seeing a full moon and at the other seeing a new moon. Enough of the moon works. Um, and then there's the jet stream. Uh, the jet stream forms over steep temperature gradients at the mid latitudes. It's driven by thermal wind, which helps distribute heat energy through the atmosphere. The, swif the swiftly moving river of air screams eastward, its poleward tendency balanced by the Coriolis force, uh, which stems from Earth's rotation. Uh, in the enormous northern hemisphere, it deflects um, air parcels to the right um, and south of the equator to the left. It's if you're looking at um, things like cyclones and tornadoes and that sort of thing, it's what makes them spin a particular direction or when you pull the plug, it's what makes the water spin in a different direction depending on which hemisphere you're in. You are actually seeing the effects of the Coriolis force. Um, and so therefore, run yourself a sink of water, pull the plug, and um, ask a flat earth why it spins that particular direction. Because a flat disc wouldn't orbit, it wouldn't rotate. Um, it, it wouldn't rotate. Um, and so because it wouldn't rotate, we'd have no jet stream snaking its way about the poles. We'd have no big exploring storms, um, like nor'easters. We'd have no spinning areas of high or low pressure. Uh, those air masses could still exist, but there'd be no rule to their orientation or spin. Um, and any weak spin would just be random. Um, despite this, tornadoes and water spouts could still exist on a flat Earth. Those depend on smaller scale wind dynamics and can't feel the Earth's rotation. Uh, however, at present, nearly all tornadoes in the hemisphere, nearly all tornadoes in the hemisphere, spin counterclockwise because of the larger scale storm systems that give rise to them do feel the Coriolis force. These larger scale mid latitude systems encourage supercell thunderstorms and tornadoes to spin. In a particular direction. Hurricanes wouldn't be able to form for the same reason um, that there are no hur hurricanes on or near the equator. The strength of the Coriolis force is zero there. Um, Aura Australis would have some issues. Um, Flat Earth model has a clear cut North Pole, but no clear cut South Pole. South is simply just the outer edge, which also doesn't really make any sense, um, because I can head out in a straight line easterly direction and end up right back here. Um, but on a on a flat Earth model, you head out in a straight line easterly direction. At some point, you'll end up going south same as if you went west. North and south is fine, um, but east and west just wouldn't exist. They would have to be curved directions and if you look at a compass they're not. They're quite clearly straight lines. Um, besi besides the point, um, flat earth model, as you said, has a clear-cut north pole, no, uh, not really a clear-cut south one. Um, they said the southern edge of the world is put by ice, which is Antarctica apparently, um, and so there is no definitive South Pole in the model. Um, and so therefore the Southern Lights, or Australis, um, that are routinely visible in Antarctica and occasionally in 
Southern Tasmania and New Zealand. Um, in the real world, they exist because of their proximity to the magnetic South Pole. Um, and so without that, no lights. Um, moreover, the Earth's magnetic field results from its spinning, uh, its superheated core largely composed of iron. Uh, it's so hot but under so much pressure that some hypothesize it may be in plasma form despite having, uh, despite behaving like a solid. That spinning mass is what generates Earth's protective magnetic field. Um, now that magnetic field is what also protects us from UV radiation, um, among other things. Uh, magnets have a north and a south pole. If the north pole exists as it does in the flat earth theory, then typically this south pole would be beneath it on the underside of earth rather than near Antarctica. And again, that's another gap that flat earthers can't explain. If north is on top of the planet disk, then what exists underneath? Um, and is this where people think that you can dig through the earth? and end up in China? Like, is that just what the underside of the disc is? Um, I know that that's sort of a big, sort of, um, cartoon trope. They just, you just start digging down, you end up in China. Um, could also be Australia, the land down under, and therefore that's why it doesn't exist, and we're all just paid actors, because we just live on the underside of the disc, where there's no gravity, and we just fall off, because dumb science. Um, anyway, if we do just get the idea of the Earth's core or magnetism, then where do these lights come from? Where does Aurora Borealis or Aurora Australis come from? If they buy the idea of a spinning magnetic core, um, where would you put the 750 mile wide mass? Flat Earth cannot explain that. Ocean currents on a flat Earth would be just weird. They, it wouldn't make sense. The lack of Coriolis force coupled with virtually sideways gravity, along with the method and distri distribution of heating, would lead to truly bizarre behaviour of, of sea currents. All the existing ocean currents in the world can be explained in tandem with the proven fact of around Earth. And yet again, flat earthers can't round out their arguments for those things. So now that we know all this, how do you debate one? Because let's be honest, that's what we all really want to know. Um, why do people believe in the flat earth? And is it worth getting into debate over? And if it is, how do you do it? Um, and yeah, so this is a rather interesting fact. To put it bluntly, uh, we know more about the curvature of the Earth than almost any other topic in the realm of physical science. There are so many experiments, observations, and demonstrations that have, time and again, revealed the curve of the Earth, and they will continue to do so. Um, and it all starts with the horizon. Um, if you stood, there's uh, Moana Kia. Marwanakia. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I hope one of those is the correct pronunciation. It's a big ass mountain on the big island of, of Hawaii. If you stood on that and looked out, you should be able to see there's, I think, the second highest peak in Hawaii. One is, um, if you were to, if you were to flatten the earth out, it would lie 303 uh, miles away, but because of the curvature of the Earth, the maximum you can see is, I think it's like 233 miles away, um, meaning that you can't see this other peak, um, whereas if the Earth was flat, you 100% would be able to. Um, it would also mean that if people climb to the top of Everest, theoretically, they'd be able to see over the edge of the world, um, which I mean, technically speaking, you, you do. But it's just because at that particular point, the Earth just curves away from you. Um, but yeah, um, where does it get into? 
well. Okay. Cool. Um, so if you're going to argue from evidence, um, it, it's the the discussion is really about the actual evidence uh, and the scientific process. People who believe that the Earth is flat aren't coming to that conclusion from the same types of observations. They instead believe that we are being misled and lied to, and that scientists want you to believe that the Earth is round despite its flatness. They think that they're like switched on. Um, so the question isn't why do people believe in a flat Earth, but rather why do people believe it's a conspiracy? Uh, and the answer is the same reason it's always been a lack of trust. Many people don't trust society, uh, most notably the representatives of society. Um, and so that trust often falls even further when it comes to elite uh, representatives of that society, which includes government officials, members of academia, and scientists. Um, so by claiming that the Earth is flat, people are really expressing a deep distrust of scientists and of science itself. Um, they've really sort of taken a seeing is believing um, approach. Um, so if you find yourself talking to a flat earther, skip evidence, skip arguments, and uh, ask how you can build, like ask yourself how you can build um, trust with that person. Um, maybe show them some of these experiments yourself. Um, there are, there, there are a couple, you can look up ways to test that the Earth is round, find a couple. Um, obviously, obviously there's the um, Eratosthenes, Eratosthenes, that's the one, Eratosthenes um, exercise, where you put a stick in the ground um, at a particular time on a particular day, and then you go and you put a stick in the ground somewhere else and you measure the difference in dot length of shadows at that particular time of day. Um, the easiest way to do that probably is if this particular flat earth that lives in a different city be like, okay cool, tomorrow at, at this time put a stick in the ground and, and you know, where, where, where you're going to be able to clearly see its shadow take a photo of it. I'm going to do the exact same, we'll look up both at the exact same time for each other, and we'll have a look at the difference in shadows. Um, because then you're able to do it instantaneously because the internet's a wonderful thing. Um, and then they will have evidence. Um, and again, all of the other things that I've mentioned as well, um, fill, a, fill a sink with, with water, pull the plug, ask them why it spins in that particular direction, why it never spins in another direction, or why it never just goes down. If you live on the equator, water just, it just goes down. There's no spinning force. It just straight down the plug hole. Um, so, yeah. Fun times. Um, do with this information what you will. Um, and, um, yeah. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. It would be greatly appreciated. And also, if you would not mind ringing that notification bell, um, if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, that would also be um, appreciated. Um, again, I will try to put these um, these articles. I'll try to link them down below in the description. Uh, and until next time, guys. Yeah, it's good on.